Yo, what is going on, guys? Owen Nason here, or Javon, once again, bringing you guys another GTA 5 video today. Today's video will feature the brand new Doomsday Heist DLC. Now, there's been a lot of hype concerning this new DLC update. There's a lot of new cars. There's a lot of cool things that they've added to this update that make it probably one of the biggest updates that I've seen yet. So you guys already know we're going to go into it, show you guys all the cool things about it. We're going to show you guys all the must-haves and some of the must-not-haves. We're going to get you guys hooked up on the info so you can know exactly what's going on with this new update. Now, as I said before, this is a pretty big update. I think it is the biggest update that they ever released so far. So we can't cover everything in one video. So today's video is going to be mainly just about the cars only. Anything involving all the new special vehicles, that's what this video right here is going to cover. We're going to take a look inside the Warstock website, and we're going to take a look in the Legendary Motorsports website to see all the new vehicles that they have to offer for you guys. And just to get you guys informed on what you should have and everything so without further ado let's get going okay so before you even get started buying any vehicles the first thing that you must do is purchase a facility Now, if you look here on the map, these are all the spots where you are basically able to purchase a facility. And just so you know, a lot of the new DLC vehicles can only be purchased if you have a facility first. So that's the first thing that you must do. And sad to say, there's no getting around it. So once you find a location that you want to choose for your facility, you can go ahead and customize it to how you want, according to your budget, of course. And then once you get that done and out the way, then you're finally able to go ahead and start purchasing some of these new DLC vehicles. All right, so before we can modify any of these vehicles for this update, it's recommended for you to have an Avenger. So we're gonna buy that right now and get that going. Just so we do buy our vehicles, we're able to modify them inside of that and see exactly what these vehicles can do and see what we can equip them up with. So as you see right here, the HVY Avenger, it costs 3.4 mil. Let's go ahead and buy this thing. We're gonna go ahead and just mod it out really quickly and then we're gonna get it delivered to our facility. Now, one important feature you're gonna need is a vehicle workshop. This is going to allow you basically to customize a lot of vehicles that you buy for the Doomsday DLC Heist update. So buying the vehicle workshop is definitely a priority. Make sure you do that. All right, looks like we're all set. Let's go ahead and make this purchase. Okay, looking at this thing firsthand, this thing is humongous. Let's go ahead and access the facility vehicle workshop. Let's get the armor upgraded. This thing can drop bombs. But just to show you guys, you can get the turrets on there if you want, the rear turrets. You can pretty much hook this thing up to be super bad. The carpet bombing ability, which is definitely, you know, a top-notch priority. Now, I mean, I'm not going to really use this thing like that. I only got it just for the vehicle workshop. So I'm going to skip all this stuff and get back to that later. So as you guys see right now, there's a big variety of vehicles you can choose from for this update. I mean, it's so many different vehicles. It is absolutely hard to decide what you want. They all have a pretty hefty price point, though. Most of them are between, like, 3 to $4 million on average. So, I mean, you probably won't be able to buy all of them, but I'm trying to, like, you know, find just, like, the good ones and cool ones or the top-rated ones and try to review those for you guys right now. So, of course, the first one that I'm looking at is this tank right here. This one is called the TMO2 Kanjali. Now, I don't really know what's so big about this, I mean, compared to the other tanks like the Rhino Tank or the APC. So, definitely got to get this right here and check it out and see what it's all about. All right, as you guys can see, our tank has just been delivered right in front of me. Let's go get it and mod it out and see what we can put on it. Now, I can tell you right now, by just rolling up on this thing, this thing looks extremely futuristic. Like, I've never seen a tank look like this ever in my life on no video game of no sort. All right, so as always, you know, I always, like, get the armor fully up, get the brakes, the engine, everything, like, you know, starting off with the vehicle, like, the basics. Got to upgrade all that stuff to the max, but the most important thing is the weapon, so let's get straight to that. Now, I normally don't put proximity mines on my vehicle just because they don't really, like, I guess, help or play a big portion of uh, support. So let's go to straight to the uh, primary weapons instead. Now, for the primary weapons, this has a railgun cannon. I'm assuming that's the main, you know, attraction to this tank. So let's go ahead and equip that on. $300,000 for that, by the way. Go ahead and equip that really fast, and we'll take that out in a second and see what it can do. I'll skip the horn. All right, so that's pretty much it for the modification of this tank. Let's go ahead and take it out and see what kind of damage it can do. All right, now looking at the tank just from an overall outside stance, I would say that it definitely looks a little bit smaller than the Rhino tank, but I'm sure it will probably pack just as a heavy punch as the Rhino tank. So let's go ahead and check out the power features and the weapons of this tank. Definitely got some speed, I'll tell you that. Definitely pretty quick for a tank. All right, let's try this cannon out now. The $300,000 cannon. Let's see what that's all about.
Okay, as you can hear when that thing is going off, that thing sounds absolutely devastating. We need a target actually to get in front of us so we can see exactly how strong and powerful this cannon is. And there's also a feature for the turret that you can actually charge it up for even stronger blasts. Let's charge it and see how strong this thing can do some damage. You hear that noise? It sounds serious. Let's go ahead and move down this way a little bit and try to find something decent to shoot at. So we have a massive polyp right here. Let's go ahead and fire a shot and charge it up and see how strong this thing is. Yeah, this thing is definitely powerful. I mean, like any turret, as you know, on any tank, usually one hit pretty much destroys any vehicles anyway. And another cool feature of this uh, tank, basically, you can have your teammate hop in the tank for the secondary controls, which will control the machine guns. As you see right here, my partner's in the, uh, the tank passenger seat, just letting loose on anything in front of him. So while you're controlling the main turret, he can control the secondary turret, which can provide double carnage on anyone that you guys come across. Now, the next important thing of all my vehicles that I like to review is a test of durability and armor of it. So we're gonna give it a couple of rocket shots and see how many shots it takes till it actually explodes. Okay, eight rocket shots. This thing took eight rocket shots. Definitely tough and durable. In my opinion, I give it a 10 out of 10. All right, so let's check out some more vehicles. All right, so moving on. The very next vehicle that we have for this review today is not even a vehicle. Yeah, you guys already know what this is. This is like the most heavily anticipated vehicle, or I don't even know what to call this thing, actually. The most heavily anticipated item that's been released this far. This is basically GTA's version of a jetpack, which is called the Thruster. So we're gonna go ahead and purchase this really fast, get it delivered to our facility, and then we're gonna hook it up and see what kind of features and goodies we can put on this thing. Alright, so first off, controlling the jetpack or the thruster is actually fairly easy. If you thought it might be kind of hard or complicated to control this thing, you're definitely wrong. It's very easy, smooth to handle, and it's definitely not too bad in my opinion. So we went on and equipped it the missiles for the thruster. Now we know having the missile attachment on anything isn't really new for GTA, but it's good to have it for this thruster because that way you can basically fly around and maintain a nice aerial assault if you ever got into a situation where you would need to. And the last most important thing that we have on this thruster is indeed the flares. Now I'm telling you guys right now, this is gonna be a new thing basically with this jetpack flying all around the sky and whatnot. People are gonna see it, they're gonna wanna shoot at you and try to take you down. So you're gonna need some type of defensive mechanism to keep you safe while you're in the air. So I strongly recommend that you equip this thing with some flares. You're gonna be glad that you did. All right, so let's see what our next vehicle is going to be that we're going to purchase for this Doomsday Heist DLC update. We're going to purchase a Strongberg. Now, I know this vehicle right here is an underwater vehicle. It can drive underwater like a submarine. So that's definitely something cool that I want to see. There's not that many submarine vehicles on this game that you can actually, like, drive and control. So to see that they have this for a car form that can act as a submarine, I definitely got to check this out and see what that's all about. Let's go ahead and buy that now. 3.1 million. Let's go ahead and get that going really fast and check that out when it gets here. Now, I gotta admit, it's pretty dope to have a vehicle that's actually able to be submerged in water. So basically, once you jump in the water, you have to hold right on the D-pad to make a switch in the submarine mode, as you see right here. I kind of jumped in prematurely, but, but as you see, the car doesn't get destroyed if you don't hit right on the D-pad right away to transfer it into submarine mode. Now, once you get underwater and it transforms into submarine mode, you can see now on the weapon wheel that you have torpedoes able to fire. Now, I don't know how useful this is ever going to be, but if you ever found yourself in an underwater problem, you need some type of assistance, this right here is definitely going to do the trick, I would say, in my opinion. This should be able to hold you down and help you get the job done. So I'll give this vehicle a nice 7 out of 10. Let's get back on land. See how the wings fold back in? Folds back to a regular car like it was never underwater in the first place. And of course, back on land, you have your regular weapons, you have machine guns, and you have the missiles. Like, once again, you guys know what missiles do. You can to the Ruiner or any type of vehicle like that that have the missile capabilities. So I'm not going to go into all that. You guys already know what that's all about. All right, so moving on to our next vehicle that we're going to review for the Doomsday DLC Heist update is going to be the Deluxo. 
Now, as you see in the pictures right here, basically this vehicle can fly in the skies. I mean, I'm not surprised at this point. We don't see vehicles that can go into water. We don't see futuristic style military tanks. We don't see jetpacks. So there's nothing that's actually going to surprise me at this moment. So as you see right here, it comes with a $4.7 million price tag. That is definitely kind of high, but we got to check it out for you guys. So let's go ahead and buy it and get it delivered to our facility. And then once it get here, we're going to upgrade it and see what it's all about. I like how those doors sound when you open them up. All right, inside the Avenger. Now, of course, the only thing that really interests me for this vehicle is equipping the weapons on it, of course. Let's go ahead and get straight to that part. Mounted MGs and missiles. This is definitely a must. So if you're going to go ahead and get this vehicle, make sure you get the mounted MGs and missiles attachment as well for it. All right, let's take it outside. All right, so it says to press A to enter hover mode. And then while in hover mode, pull back on the left stick to fly. But let's go ahead and put out hover mode and see exactly how that works. Okay, that's dope. All right, here we are. We're taking off. This is extremely futuristic at this point. I mean, I don't even know what GTA has even become at this point. I've never thought I'd be playing GTA unmodded and be flying a car like this. Now, cycling through the weapons, we have the machine guns and we have the missiles, of course. You guys pretty much know what these do. No need to even go over these, pretty much. You know what they're going to do. Now, one thing I got to tell you, you got to make sure you're landing this thing properly. If you hit A right now on the controller, it's pretty much going to drop you out of the sky, which you don't want to do. Now, there isn't that much really to show for for this vehicle other than the fact that it can hover. I mean, that's the main feature on it. Now, other than that, let's see how strong this thing is with the durability test. Let's see how many rockets it can take, if it can take any, and see how well that works for it. All right, let's fire a rocket and see how many rocket blasts it can take before it actually blows up. All right, as you can see, this thing cannot take a single rocket shot. That's kind of unfortunate, but I mean, it is what it is. It can fly around pretty much, and it has missiles. As you guys know, with any GTA, you know, vehicle, any vehicle that has, like, missile capability and stuff like that, the armor on it is not going to, you know, be too strong. I guess you're going to have it like that to keep it kind of balanced so that we won't have an overpowered vehicle. But like I said, still dope and still a lot of fun. Definitely worth getting, you know, if you want to have fun online and just messing around and all that. So I'll give it a nice 9 out of 10. All right, so moving on to the last vehicle that I would like to review for you guys today. Now, this vehicle is not in the Warstock website. It's actually in the Legendary Motorsports webpage. It's basically going to be another supercar that you can purchase, part of the new update. The vehicle that I'm actually talking about is right here is the Ubermod SC1. Now, you guys all know that Ubermod basically is a BMW equivalent for Grand Theft Auto. And this vehicle right here, the SC1, pretty much resembles the i8. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase this really fast to see how dope I can trick it out. So now we're in the mod shop. Now, the only thing I'm actually going to upgrade is anything that involves, you know, enhancing the performance of the vehicle. So we're going to upgrade the engine, the transmission, the turbo, anything that involves enhancing the speed on this vehicle. And we're going to change the looks on the vehicle as well. Give it a nice spray paint job and make sure it looks really nice and sexy. It looks pretty dope. This car is definitely fast. Got some speed to it, definitely. Yeah, this thing's a straight up bullet. Now, the only disappointment that I have with this vehicle is the fact that it doesn't have the Lamborghini style doors. When you open the door, they open kind of regular traditionally. You wouldn't expect that from an i8. I mean, they're going to copy the car for our design and looks, at least have that function as well. That's definitely something important that you got to have for this vehicle. But overall, I would say it's a pretty cool looking vehicle. Very nice looking, very fast, very speedy. Definitely classy and stylish to have. So, I mean, it's still a good look. So, overall rating for this vehicle, I'll give this vehicle a nice 7 out of 10. All right, guys, and that's going to be a wrap for the vehicles in the Doomsday DLC Heist update. Now, I know I did forget a few vehicles that I did not mention exactly, but that's because basically they weren't really too popular, and I didn't think they were really worth talking about. One of the vehicles that I left out was the RCV. This is basically a police-style vehicle with a water gun attached on top of it. I mean, it's an armored vehicle. I mean, I didn't really see the point of basically reviewing it. It wasn't really that popular. It's for $3 million. I just didn't feel it was worth the price. So I didn't really bother talking about that vehicle. Another vehicle I didn't mention was a Chernobog. This basically is like a missile type of uh, launcher type of vehicle. Basically, you'll put it in a set location, and it's good for defending an area if you want to, like, protect the area or something like that. It's good for, like, you know, just defense purposes only. Once again, that also wasn't a very popular item, so I didn't really bother reviewing that one. Neither was a barrage. The Volatov is basically like a stealth bomber type of plane. I mean, I have enough, you know, planes pretty much in my arsenal already that can, you know, drop bombs and shoot missiles and all that. So I didn't feel the need to basically review another one of those. It's kind of like the same thing, just a different look. So I really didn't want to bother spending almost $4 million on that either. So I skipped that item as well. But anyways, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. If you guys definitely enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, like, we will greatly appreciate it. 
And if you want to see more videos like this, please make sure you sub to OSN Gaming. Get the latest videos as soon as they come out. I thank you guys all for watching. Take it easy. And as always, have a good day.